Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be teaching you guys the beginning, the basics of um, SAS, which is a CSS framework. It is very, very well known. Um, the reason for that is because I don't see a lot of React plus SAS tutorials. Um, not that there is any like a lot of differences between using SAS normally without any um, JavaScript framework or using SAS with like React. However, I just thought that using this combination and trying to build like a very simple website while at the same time um, going over the basics of SAS, how to configure, how to set up would be a good video idea. Now, before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it because it will help push my video to more people. Uh, my channel is growing a lot and it is all due to the support of you guys. So if you guys could just leave a like, help the algorithm, promote my videos, um, I would massively appreciate that. So let's get into the tutorial. So as you can see over here, I have a very simple React website. If I open up here Google Chrome, you can see um, it has literally nothing inside of it. Just hey guys over here. Um, and you can see that my folder structure right now, it's very simple. I just deleted some um, files that already come with React. It's not really important. Um, I just ran create React app and um, this is the project that I have, right? You can see that I can make any changes over here. Say something like subscribe. Um, and you'll see that um, it should be working in our application. Now, if you want to run SAS into your project, it takes a little bit of understanding, especially when you're trying to configure it. However, just to make our, our process run a lot smoother, um, I would recommend installing two different extensions in VS Code. I'm gonna open up over here. The one of them is called SAS, literally SAS. I guess it's it was invented by SAS, the company, the, like the the developers who created this framework. Um, it will just help you with autocomplete formatting and highlighting. Um, it, it definitely helps out. I I would 100% recommend it. And the next one that I would recommend is um, yeah, over here, live SAS compiler. This is essential because um, the way that SAS works is uh, if you go to any browser and you try to read the, the inner HTML, the, the, the CSS from the browser, you won't have SAS code written inside of it. Similar to how uh, if you build a, a React website and you go to the HTML, um, it, it will be completely different from what you actually wrote because uh, the browser can't read JSX. So the browser can't read SCSS, which is actually the extension for SAS files. Um, what it happens is whenever you uh, want to read those files, it compiles and creates a CSS file that cor corresponds to um, the SAS file that you created. It seems a bit complicated in the beginning, but it really isn't. It's just that SAS is very useful for developing. Um, it won't make your code run faster or anything like that. It is just very, very useful when you're developing. So it does need that, that little uh, push so that you need to compile the CSS file and the actual CSS that it's going to be reading won't be SAS because um, the browser can't read SAS. So what we have is this extension over here called Live SAS Compiler, which will automatically, when you save a SAS file, um, and it will automatically save the changes from the, the, that you wrote in that SAS file into a different CSS file. And in case you want to implement those styles, it will actually be reading from the CSS file and not from the SAS file. I'll go over all of this, especially when we start writing the code. However, um, this is a, a very important um, extension to download. Okay, now that we have that done, let's start implementing. Okay, so let's start implementing the very like first um, changes to our website. And what we want to build first is a simple navbar, right? So I'll just create over here a component, I'll create a components folder, a new folder, let's call it components. And let's create a component called navbar. So navbar.js. And I'll use the uh, react snippets to create it by write, just writing RFCE. So you can see we generated this component over here. And what we want to do is we want to come to this, this div over here, and let's give it a class name of um, something like navbar. And right here, let's just add some links, right? I'll just create some links over here. Um, let's say home page, I'll just create a bunch of them. So I'll just copy this, paste it over here. Um, let's create a home page. Uh, I don't know about page. Uh, then let's say profile page. And then let's create a contact page. Uh, we're not actually going to create those pages. This is just going to be an example project. But you can see that now in our screen, if I refresh it, oh, I actually didn't import this into our application. So I'll come here to our app.js. And over here at the top, I'll just import the navbar like this and it will automatically import the navbar into our application. So what you can see over here is we have our links perfectly done. They don't look like links yet because we didn't add any path. So I'm gonna add a path by saying href and just putting something like um, slash home 
um, just like the routes to the app. So I'll put slash home, I'll put something like uh, slash about slash profile and slash contact. So let me just do this um, about and then contact or profile and then contact. Okay, so we just build a very, very simple um, UI for our application for our nav bar. However, how do we translate this? And how do we make this look better by using SES? So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a styles folder over here. Um, let's just come over here and say something like uh, styles. And this folder will hold the CSS and the SAS for our application. And as I was talking before, whenever we create, we want to create a um, like a styling file, a CSS file, or a CSS file, we have to come over here, give it a name. So let's call it navbar, and then put SCSS at the end. So when I save this, you can see we created our SAS file. And the reason why I have automatic support is because I'm using material um, theme, um, the, the, the folder icons, uh, extension that exists in, in VS code, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And what you can do here in this SAS file is you can basically write normal CSS uh, because there isn't a lot of differences uh, initially between SAS and CSS. And that's kind of good because uh, it is very easy to translate your CSS knowledge to your SAS knowledge. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create, I'm going to um, call for the navbar component like this. And let's start making some changes. The first change is I want to make a div equal to 100%. And I want to make the height equal to um, something like, I don't know, 80 pixels. And then I'm going to put the background color to be something like uh, gray. Uh, but I'll change this later and you guys will see why. So this over here um, should will work. However, there's a, a difference. Uh, we need to come here to our network file and import this file over here. Now, when we save this, you can see that um, it automatically created two different files for you, the navbar.css and the navbar.css.map. The reason for that is because we're using the extension, the live SAS extension, which is running down here, as you can see. Um, and it's great because uh, it will automatically generate the files. And you can see that it is exactly like what we wrote. However, when we start implementing the stuff that only exists in SAS, um, it will automatically convert and compile a CSS file with those changes um, for us, which is amazing. So now if we want to see those changes in our application, because we currently aren't seeing those changes, we have to come to our uh, component. And instead of importing the SAS, um, CSS, uh, the, the SAS file, we just import the, um, I'll go back twice, we need to import the CSS file because you can't read SAS files in your browser. So I would just say navbar.css and you'll see that now we should start seeing the changes, right? However, we still haven't done anything related to SES, which it's kind of annoying. So let's start doing it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to grab a, a caller in our application. Let me just look, I want to make um, I want to make our website have only four callers. So it's kind of like a palette, right? It will have a black collar, it will have a white collar, it will have um, let's say red or yellow, something like that, we'll create our palette. And we're going to define those colors so that we don't need to write the RGB value for them every single time we want to use them. And there's a great thing with SAS is that you can actually define um, variables instead of similar to in programming languages, you can define a variable over here called black color. Uh, and then set it equal to this RGB value. And now instead of using the RGB value, every time you want to render this color, you can just render the black color. And you'll see that when I save this, and it compiles, um, if you come over here, um, it actually hasn't finished compiling, we need to finish, we need to wait for this to be to be done. But uh, when it finishes compiling the, the changes, you'll see that um, now we have this color for the background color instead of um, what we wrote over here, because this isn't says. So I'll close this over here. And you'll see that now we have this color in our screen. And this is really nice. This is one of the main benefits of says. Now, one thing we can do to even improve our design structure and our folder structure is actually create a separate file just for our variables. So to do that, I'm going to create a folder over here called variables. Um, and inside of here, I'm going to create this file, which is going to be called variables dot says like this. And inside of here, I'm just going to declare all of the different variables that we're going to be using in our app. And the reason for that is because the whole point of declaring a variable is to be like, being able to reuse that variable, right? So if I want to use the black color color in many different SAS files, I can just define it here in this variables file. And now instead of directly creating defining this variable over here, I can just import 
um, from the path to this file. So the path will be um, the variables folder slash variables dot says, um, actually put an extra slash. Um, and when I save this, uh, it should actually be um, correctly like recognizing this black color, which is amazing. Let's see if it still works. And as you can see, it still works. It still shows the black color in our screen. So now let's start um, just styling this a bit. I'm going to create one more variable to our application, which is going to be the white color. Um, and it's going to be something like um, it's going to be a bit white, <laughs> obviously, um, then I'm going to use the white as a as an example, but it's gonna be a little bit more gray. So I'm gonna push this over here. So this will be the the CSS value over here. Um, or the, the RGB value over here. And we can just use this white color variable inside of this thing over here. And now let's just come over here at the bottom and access the um, a tag inside of this um, navbar and just give it a color of white like this. Um, white color. And then let's also like style it a bit. Let's increase its font size to something like, um, I don't know, 20 pixels, 25 pixels. Um, and then let's also do something like, hmm, let me think, probably uh, remove the text decoration, um, equal to none so that it doesn't look like a, a, a link. And I think that's probably it. Uh, let's, let's just look at what the changes are. And as you can see over here, um, our links are changed, right? They're white. Um, so the next few things I want to do is I want to basically just uh, declare a font for our application. So I'm going to say a font family is going to be Arial. I like to use this font over here. And I probably want to use this with, like most mostly through my application, but uh, I really want to use this specifically for titles. So what I want to do is I will just grab this over here and I'll define two new variables. One of them is going to be the uh, like the title font. And it's going to be this, uh, but the other one will be the like text font or whatever. Uh, I'll call it body font. Which is just going to be some Times New Roman. So as you can see over here, these are the two fonts we're going to have. And I like also dividing our our um, my SAS file, uh, especially dividing it like this uh, with fonts and then with colors. So um, what we want to do now is we want to come here to our navbar.sass and we will just say something like um, title font like this and the changes should be made. So um, now I'm going to add some other stuff. For example, I want to make this a display flex um, and maybe justify stuff, uh, justify content, but add to the center like this and align items to the center as well. Uh, let's see the changes. You can see they're now perfectly matched in the center and the font also changed. Um, maybe I want to put them to the right. So I'll just say something like uh, flex end over here and it should be to the right, but I want to put some margin between them. So I'll say margin over here um, of maybe like 10 pixels. And you can see that they now are kind of spaced out. And I also want to uh, maybe put a like a, a thing over here, a div over here, which will encompass all the links. So div, and let's just make it a class name of links uh, like this. And we'll just come over here to navbar and instead of saying navbar a, uh, actually this this can stay like this, but we're going to access the uh, navbar dot links thing. And this one is going to be um, pushed to the right. So let's say margin right of 20 pixels. And over here, you can see that now our links are over here. And the reason for this is because we want to push our links a little bit to the right. Um, but we, we only want to push all of them together and not each one individually. So I can actually make this even bigger. I'll make this 50. And you'll see that we're now being pushed to the right. And I think it looks good over here. Now, how do we remove this padding and that is around this, this navbar? It's actually pretty simple. I'll come to the um, to any of these files over here. I'll, I'll make it on the on the navbar, but I'll just access the body. And I'll say uh, margin is equal to zero. And padding is equal to zero. This automatically comes with um, any react app, which is kind of annoying, but you can see that implementing those changes just fixes everything. So now we have a beautiful navbar. And anywhere in our application, we can use the variables that we defined in our SAS file. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to be able to put a simple like, 
um, background color over here. Uh, maybe this is actually already fine, but I want to be able to put like a title of the page um, and then some. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to just build some some sort of um, part here in the website where it's going to be this main page over here. Um, I don't want to complicate a lot of things, but I want to be able to demonstrate all the different um, things and that, that are important with SAS. So, for example, let's try to put a title over here. So I'll come here to our um, app.js and I'll create another component. Um, let's call it. Um, I don't know, just the main page .js. And over here is just this is just going to be rendered, uh, re rendering this part of the page over here. So what we want to do is I want to display here, I want to put a class name of um, main page like this. And for now, I'll just put an h1 tag over here. Um, and this h1 tag will have will be saying something like, Welcome to the website. Now, there's one thing that is important to understand. I'll just actually import this over here, put it below the navbar, say main page, and it will automatically import. And you'll see that now this is in our screen. But there's one thing that is important to understand. If we want to access and I want to, for example, edit this um, h1 tag over here, there's two ways of doing this. Um, you've seen previously by like, if I want to edit the, the a tag inside of the navbar, I did this. But with SAS, there's actually something really interesting. And I'll show you guys what it is. I'll create here. Um, a, a, another styles file, it's going to be called um, main page dot s CSS. And over here, we're going to access the um, main page component. And for now, we're just going to uh, give it a display of flex. And I'm, ju I'm just gonna add the justify content center, and the align item center as well, like this. But if I want to edit the the welcome to the website, actually, I'll, I'll also I have to import this file, you see that the main page .css has been created. So I'll come here to main page, and I'm going to import the main page um, actual style. So I'll come to style slash uh, main page dot CSS like this. Um, so you'll see that it actually centers in the middle because we added the just the, the display flags, justify content center and align item center. However, if I want to edit specifically the h1 tag inside of this website, one thing we, I can do is instead of coming here and saying dot um, main page, and then h1 like this, I can actually nest this tag inside of the main page over here, I can just come and say something like, um, h1 inside of here, and just write the all the styles for the h1 tag inside of this page. Um, let's do something like I'll make the caller equal to um, let's create a new caller, I'll say, um, red caller. And then let's give it an RGB value. Actually, I'll just say red. Um, but change it a little bit to be something like this. And now let me import the um, this file over here, I'll say import the the actual variables file. So let's say variables slash variables dot SCSS. And we always have to put a, a semicolon over there. And now let's just make this equal to the red color that we created. Okay, so you see that it will work, it actually accesses this, and it works perfectly, right? If I didn't do it this way, if I actually came over here, inside of this page, and I added this tag over here, outside of the main page, I added another h1 tag. That said something like, hey, you'll see that this one won't be red. And the reason for it is because it is not nested inside of the uh, div with the class name called main page. So I'm just going to delete this because I just wanted to use it as an example. So now this is actually pretty good because I'll show you guys something. Imagine if I created a button over here, right? Just created this button, I'll say something like click here. Um, imagine that I want to recreate this button and I want to create a specific style for this button and reuse it many times in my application. You can see right now it looks pretty ugly, but let's add some styles to it. I'll come over here and say something like button, then just add something like, um, I don't know, uh, let's say width uh, of 200 pixels, height of like, uh, I don't know, 40 pixels, let's make the background color be the red color. And let's make uh, maybe give it a border radius, remove the border first, and then give it a border radius. Um, just a bunch of styling, right? Of like eight pixels. Let's see how it looks. Um, the cool thing is that you see we have this button. Oh, I need to also 
uh, put, put the color of the text. I'll make the color of the text be something like um, the white color just so we keep consistency and I'll also increase the font size. Uh, it doesn't need to look uh, cool, it's just as an example. But you can see that um, if we come over here, we have this button. Now imagine I wanna reuse this, this piece of uh, styling many times in my application. What I can do is I can use this very important thing in, in SAS called a mix in, which um, serves as almost like a function. Uh, you can put a name over here to declare it, uh, to declare the name of this specific um, style. Uh, let's call it button style, uh, like this. And what we can do is we can just condense a large like piece of code inside of here, and we can reuse this many times in our application. Um, I can come over here in this specific page and just access the button inside of the the main page, like this. And then say something like, uh, for the button, I want to access, I want to display the button stuff. And inside of this button, I can say, um, I want to include in this styling, the button style um, mixing that we created. And now you'll see that uh, if we come over here, it still looks the same. And you can actually export this to many different um, files, which is why I would recommend actually keeping this um, in your variables or your helpers uh, f folder over here. I would usually create, uh, like it's not a variable, it's almost like a function. It's the, the distinction between SAS variables and, and mixins is almost like the distinction between a variable and a function. Um, one is meant to represent uh, one single piece of data, um, either it's a, a, a color or, I don't know, a font or whatever you want. And this over here, a mixin, will condense a large piece, like a, lo a lot of lines uh, into a single function. And you'll see that right now I can still access this because we're importing everything from the variables file. So you'll see that over here, we still see the red button. And without having this style, I can even come to the navbar and I can add the same thing to the navbar. I'll just say, um, I'll close this over here grab uh, this over here, just come to the nav bar, and I can add a button styling over here and say the same thing, right? Um, now, one thing that you guys might be wondering if, the, if this is your first time actually learning about this is if we can actually add um, if, like parameters or arguments to a mixin function. And well, the answer to that is yes, you can. You can actually come over here to this mixin and just add uh, a specific uh, argument or different arguments that it, it takes to, so that you can actually customize whatever you want. So this is a CSS framework. If you're used to something like style components, it does kind of the same thing. Uh, you can come over here and say something like, um, let's say maybe the caller, um, and then maybe let's say font size, like this. And over here, you'll just pass the caller. So let's say color and let's also pass the font size over here font size and you'll see that now every time I call this button style uh, uh, mixin such as over here I can actually pass this piece of, like this information uh, specifically to here so I can come over here and say that the first argument is the color I want to make it a uh, red color and the second one is font size I want to make it um, let's say 35 pixels, something like that. You'll see that it actually will work. It increased the size. But for example, if I came to here and I created another button that is outside, I want to declare that all the buttons outside of the main page should be, um, let's make this purple like this and make this 205 pixels, something huge, right? Um, you'll see that actually this won't be this way because this is inside of the main page. But if we created a button here in our main page component and put it outside of the main page, so actually let's just put it here in the navbar or in the app.js, you'll see that this will satisfy the conditions. It's actually huge over here. You barely can see it, but you can see that it actually works. Um, every button outside of the main page will have this styling, which is pretty nice. You can reuse code very easily without having to just keep writing the same lines of code in CSS, which is pretty annoying. And this just helps a lot. I definitely think that anyone who've worked who's like worked on a with a CSS framework before, either it be um SAS or working with something like style components in React, um, you'll definitely know how easy it is and how like you'll probably never go back to writing normal CSS ever again just because 
it's so convenient you know what i mean now this is it for this video um i hope you guys gained value from it i hope you guys enjoyed it i just wanted to bring a little bit of sass and react just because i've been enjoying the framework a lot recently um i'm not sure if i'm gonna change it from um, style components on like a future project however sass is it's used in the industry a lot um a lot of companies like it so i really like using it as well it, it both sass and style components has their own benefits so for that reason i actually wanted to bring this video because um i've made a video in the past just going over uh, style components and I wanted to show an alternative so you guys can decide it on your own if which one you would prefer to use. Now this was just the basics. Um, I didn't want to make the video pre uh, very long because it's just an introduction. However, if you guys want to see more more advanced SaaS um, tutorials, maybe building a whole uh, website using SaaS, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'm really open to that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next. Subscribe because I post um, two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate if you guys could support the channel and yeah that's basically it if you guys enjoyed it leave a like and i'll see you guys next time